Hello everyone, it's B again and this is my second podcast on dealing with the COVID situation. I was overwhelmed by the response that I got from my first podcast, how to use the law to empower yourself and to educate others during COVID. But I did notice that there are a lot of people out there who are simply not receiving the medical treatment that they need because of the prioritization of COVID. So I thought I'd do another podcast just to address that situation. So in this, this little video, I'm going to go back over how to decline medical interventions that you don't want and then taking it forward to look at how we can insist and what legislation we can use to make sure that we do receive the medical treatment that we want. I thought I'd begin by talking about me since that seems to have come out in the comments. As I said in my first po podcast, I'm not a lawyer. I like to do research. I dwell in the United Kingdom and for the past 27 years, I've been a qualified complementary therapist. That journey really began when I gave birth to my youngest child who was born with cerebral palsy. And right up until this day, I have been advocating for her and teaching her how to advocate for herself in terms of navigating the system. And that went right back to her early years with the hospital service, with the education service, and with the benefits service. It was really, really hard work. I also volunteer at a charity, which also supports disenfranchised people and vulnerable people, really helping them to navigate the benefit system or the tax system. Uh, this is something that I very much enjoy and it also supports my uh, belief in good advocacy. I mentioned earlier that I am a complementary therapist and my attitude towards the NHS is quite ambivalent. On the one hand, I do believe it has some sterling services, some excellent, excellent services, but there's a part of me that believes that a lot of the practices these days are more focused on peddling pharmaceutical remedies than actually dealing with good nutrition or getting out in the fresh air or improving our immune system. But I do respect and understand that a lot of people out there are in urgent need of necessary treatment and they believe the NHS can give them that treatment. So this is why I'm putting this little podcast together. So to begin, uh, let's look at the legislation that we might use uh, when trying to uh, decline a medical treatment or insist on having the medical treatment that we do need. So we have, as I mentioned in my first podcast, the Equality Act of 2010, which deals with discrimination and includes disability discrimination. The Nuremberg Code 6.1 which the United Kingdom is signed up to and which allows us to refuse medical interventions without disadvantage. So that's an important one when it comes to medical staff telling you that you can't have treatment if you don't take a test. The Fraud Act of 2006 would be an important one to use when trying to insist that you get necessary medical treatment. And I'm going to come back to that in more detail later. We do have our God-given civil liberties in the United Kingdom. These are part of the unwritten British constitution and protect our right to life. Very important if you're facing a serious illness such as cancer or heart disease, our freedom from torture so we might want to argue that refusal to give us medical treatment in order to prioritise COVID might be considered torture, our freedom of assembly and our freedom of expression. We can also consider using legalese, which is how law is lawyer speak. Lawyer speak is quite convoluted and complicated and designed to intimidate us. But we can use that when we're talking to medical personnel too. So terms such as compensation, liability, imposed, lawful remedy, fine, civil action. And also media speak, which is the art of making the probable sound like a fact. So terms such as could, might, possibly and probable. So let's first look at declining a medical intervention, how to go about it. So first of all, begin by 
asking questions because this puts you on the offensive and the other party on the defensive. So you're on the front foot. When you're asking questions, try to be curious rather than belligerent. You're looking for a win-win here where possible. You don't want to put your consultants back up so much that uh, he just walks away from the situation totally. A phrase that you can use is a common law phrase um, when dealing with uh, medical personnel trying to enforce uh, medical intervention on you is I do not consent. I do not consent to this vaccination. I do not consent to this test. Um, so that's a good phrase to have in your back pocket. When you're asking questions um, about medical interventions, think about what you can ask. You can ask uh, what ingredients the test or the vaccination has, uh, what blind tests have been done, whether the manufacturer has liability, what the efficacy of the test is, or what the percentage success of the vaccination is. Ask lots of questions. Make sure you get the batch number and the date of the test and also the name of the person who's giving the test or the vaccination. Make sure that you also know that they're qualified. And then other questions that you can ask are by what authority do you own the right to demand I agree to this medical intervention before being allowed to access other treatment? Are you aware that should you continue to coerce me in this manner, I may be entitled to compensation from you personally from this practice and or trust for human rights transgressions? Are you aware that the United Kingdom is signed up to the Nuremberg Code, which gives all dwellers of this land the right to refuse medical tests, which they morally find not to be in their best interest, and that I could use this in a court of law or tribunal to seek lawful remedy for perceived assault? I'm not going to pretend that any of this is easy. You need to really think carefully about what it is you want to say, what it is you want to refuse before you go and see your medical practitioner. And you need to also be very, very sure of what you will and will not do. Personally, I practice in the mirror. And yes, I have used these interventions successfully. Very, very recently, I had an accident and had to be transported to hospital by the paramedics. And even though I was in a, quite a bit of pain, I was able to state my wishes that I did not want a COVID test, that I did not want to wear a mask. And although the powers that be above my medical team, my medical team were absolutely fantastic, but the powers above were putting my medical team under some pressure to try and get me to have the test, I was able to withstand that pressure. Now, the reason that I was able to do that was because I had made my decision before I even got to the hospital. So I do caution you to really think through quite seriously how strongly you feel about these things. So let's now turn our attention to your right to insist on necessary medical treatment. And I want to begin by highlighting the Fraud Act of 2006, which highlights three things, fraud by false representation, fraud by failing to disclose information and fraud by abuse of position. I'm going to begin by saying this is not going to make you popular. But a, a long time ago, um, somebody once said to me that what other people think of you is none of your business. So in other words, get over it. You need to think about uh, how badly you need this treatment, how much you want this treatment, because you're going to have to fight and you're going to have to do your research. Uh, so I am suggesting that before you confront your medical practitioner, you do some research, look at the Department of Health website, your local health authorities website, the hospital trust or your GP or dental practice website. And you're looking for uh, information on their policies or their practices of how they treat their patients. And you're looking for impartiality and trust and things like this, where they're giving you a very, very good impression of the service that they are able to offer you. And the way you're going to use the Fraud Act is if they then fail to deliver in your case, 
but then really that is an act of fraud uh, under false representation so this is a very strong piece of legislation that uh, you can use and once again uh, it's about pointing that out to your medical practitioner that you might uh, legalese have um, a case of fraud against them or a case of mis misrepresentation because you've checked their website and uh, what they seem to be offering you is not what they seem to be offering on their website so you may want to seek lawful remedy against them so it may be that uh, having insisted or trying to insist on getting the right treatment you haven't got where you wanted this is quite common you're going to have to now dig in and start to persist in show some doggedness in in continuing your battle to get the treatment that you need i do have quite a lot of experience in this arena my own daughter was lost on a patient database for seven months meaning that she didn't get diagnosed until she was one year old a year in which we didn't know what was wrong with her and we didn't know what her future would be and what on earth was going on and i invoked the help of the patient advice and liaison service uh, which really helped in getting my daughter bumped up the list and getting a diagnosis i also helped them when i found the hospital were laggard laggardly in um, getting her physiotherapy and all the other dis access to other services that she needed please use pals the patient advice and liaison service if you're not getting where you want to get in terms of uh, necessary medical treatment put your concerns in writing and let your medical practitioner and the CEX of the hospital, the, the board, the board of trustees, know that you intend to hold them liable for any loss, harm or injury caused to you by their failure to up uphold their duty of care. The fact that COVID is being prioritised is not your problem. That's their problem. Having worked at the NHS executive for some time, I very rapidly came to the conclusion that the patient is merely a commodity in the NHS, whereas the Department of Health is the client. And often hospitals and doctors are being given extra cash for following through on the interventions that the Department of Health wants. And I very much suspect that this is what is going on with COVID, but none of that is your problem. Your problem is getting the medical intervention that you need. So stick with it. Also write to your Director of Public Health, the local hospital trust, the Department of Health, the Minister for Health and Social Care and advise them that if they fail to intercede, you intend to hold them liable for any loss, harm or injury to yourself due to their failure to uphold their duty of care as a public servant. Again, the prioritisation of COVID is not your problem. If you have a serious medical condition that needs treatment, that must be your first priority. And always remember that you're not there to serve the powers that be. This is something that we're taught in the Early Years Propaganda Programme. In actual fact, the powers that be, the public servants, are there to serve you. So insist and persist in making sure that they do. So there you have it, some information from me on how to decline medical interventions that you don't wish to take and how to insist and persist on getting the treatment that you really do need. I put a, a list together of resources that you might want to look and there's also a link to my first podcast on the using the law to empower yourself during COVID. I've also added my email. As I've said before, I'm not a lawyer, but I do care to advocate for people who are in difficult uh, situations. So if you need further help, you can drop me an email and I'll do my best to help you. I do have limited time, so do bear with me if I don't get back to you immediately. As a postscript, I've just read an article on the true cost of the government's decision to prioritise the COVID situation. On the healthcare of people in this country, it's really very shocking. 
I'd like to encourage people, if you are unable to get the treatment that you need from the NHS, to strongly consider attending or seeing a naturopath. Naturopaths deal with the root causes of illnesses, whereas the medical system tends to treat symptoms with pharmaceutical drugs. So please give it your consideration and I just wish you all the best if you are in that dreadful situation of having to battle to get the health care you need.